I'd like to welcome you to a demonstration of dynamic track charts by our partner Bartlett and West. Uh, but before we move to that video, I'd like to set it in context of our current efforts and our current thinking about rail here at Esri. So to start, we think that rail, both freight and passenger, will play an ever more important role in our modern transportation systems. Rail remains one of the most cost-effective modes of transportation. But for rail to really reach its full potential, it will require a greater reliance on technology and on information systems and a need to improve performance through real-time decision systems. Ultimately, rail will need to leverage what we call location intelligence. And while there are any number of technology enablers to help drive smarter rail, whether we're talking artificial intelligence and machine learning, cloud computing, or data-driven analytics, central to all of them is the importance of data and information and the power of knowing where. And together, those two elements define location intelligence and it provides the framework for transforming your rail operations. At Esri, we feel it will be largely through leveraging location intelligence that railroads can drive increased efficiencies, improve safety and security, they can provide better customer service and ultimately improve their overall performance. So what does it take for a railroad to achieve this vision? Understanding where all of your assets are located is the starting point for a location intelligence strategy. Track data and track geometry provide the foundation for almost every workflow within a rail agency, whether asset and work order management, routing and tracking, engineering, real estate and property management, they all revolve around having good track data. The problem is that for many agencies, there's no standard or authoritative track data, but rather multiple track data sets and geometries, each developed for their own individual purposes. And as a result, there's no single trusted source of data, and most rail agencies are not really able to fully leverage the full value of their data and information characterized as they are by siloed and disjointed business processes. So our goal at Esri is to help rail agencies overcome these silos and standardize on a single integrated network to support a wide range of business units based on a single version of the truth. Secondly, we want to provide a consistent view of all of the location information and to put it into the hands of everyone who needs it, both how and when they need it. So easy to access and easy to use. And third, we want to provide the tools to easily maintain this integrated network and all of the derivative views of that data to continuously maintain the currency of one of your most valuable assets your information systems. So what you're going to see today is one piece of those derivative data views, namely track charts and how they can be an integral part of your larger integrated network architecture. Hello and thanks for joining us today. My name is Reverend Tyler Remert. I am the GIS production manager with the Rail Group at Bartlett and West. Our headquarters is in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, this was part of a series of lightning talks given at ESRI's North American Rail Summit 2020. Uh, sorry if you weren't able to, to catch the speech, but I'm glad that you're here with us today. So uh, without further ado, we will jump right into it. This is Bartlett & West's Dynamic Track Chart Solution. Uh, it is kind of a, a modern take on the traditional five-mile track chart system. Uh, this is built using ESRI's portal technology and some additional extended code. Um, you can see the individual bands uh, presented here in the main window, as well as some options for other kinds of data that we can display. Uh, in my particular case, I don't always find the constructed by band super helpful, so I'm going to take it out. I much prefer to see 
utility crossings in my track chart when it loads. So that's kind of our very first demonstration there. I've, I've taken a band out and I've placed my favorite band in. We are going to navigate to a subdivision. I have two of them loaded for this demo. Uh, our first sub, Casey Jones, will start to load uh, the first uh, mile over here on the right hand side. We can scroll. Uh, we also get some navigation features. So we can move forward and backwards one five mile page at a time, or we uh, can do my favorite, which is navigate by mile post. I'm gonna pick my favorite here, mile post 152 on the Casey Jones sub. And all the data will start to uh, pour in as you can see. So we have a, a wide variety of bands, most, uh, People will be familiar with all of these. We've got things like rail replacement tie inspection. We've got the uh, main view or what some people call plan view, as well as elevation profile, curve information. Uh, I got my utility crossings here along the top, all in a nice unified format. Um, a lot of this data is 3D data from PTC and it is automatically uh, changed into a schematic event that's displayed here. Not a lot of user intervention. You do have the ability to uh, manipulate the labels and change those if you need to. But uh, the goal here really was to take data that already exists in your enterprise and get it here in a schematic format for you to consume. Uh, besides 3D data from PTC and engineering, uh, we've also got a lot of uh, tabular data displayed, like our, our speed limits are kept in a table. Um, a lot of our curve and elevation information is uh, taken care of by a separate department, and it's also in a tabular format, and it's displayed here. Um, the rest of this stuff is really uh, sourced from all around the enterprise and, and displayed here on what is really the, the backbone of the dynamic track chart solution. Um, mainline, it is a linear reference system, so it is M-aware. It has mileposts on this line. Uh, the LRS does need to be uh, manually maintained. Uh, there's a lot of tools out there to help you take care of an LRS over time. This particular solution was built on ESRI's out-of-the-box LRS tools, um, but as ESRI demonstrated at Rail Summit, there are uh, a lot of things on the horizon in terms of uh, packages like roads and highways or uh, pipeline linear referencing solutions that give you a lot of robust tools for managing a linear reference system. Uh, in addition to linear referencing, we also use the schematic package, which is the original generation of uh, schematic tools from ESRI. On the horizon there, of course, is uh, utility networks for the future, uh, managing your straight line diagrams in there. Uh, again, with the schematic portion, there is some manual work in building the straight line diagram and the offsets, but managing that schematic uh, as your track changes over time can really be made more efficient with some of the, the newer tools and things like the utility networks and even uh, the previous generations. Uh, schematic tool set. So here in our main line, uh, another thing that we're really proud of is the uh, dotted dashed here is actually real property boundary. So the width, width of the right of way. Um, this was taken from a geographic format and straightened out along the straight line and uh, put in here. Uh, the same kind of process is used for things like uh, waterways, rivers, and creeks here. Um, all the rest of this as things change through positive train, train control or your regular change management processes, uh, they get updated uh, almost automatically or immediately here on the map. Uh, a lot of our clients prefer kind of a, a nightly crunch that does an update of everything that was approved that day. Uh, it gets sucked here into the schematic and made available for you to see. I'll show you another sub as well.
So we'll move to another sub, Jesus Garcia, and we're at milepost uh, 349, the five mile page that contains it. Uh, again, we've got a lot of data in here, but in this particular area, I wanted to show you some of our uh, selection features. So I'm gonna pick our, our box tool here, and I'm gonna tell the software that I wanna draw a rectangle here in the plan band. And uh, we'll draw a box around the set of features here and you can see the, the query is running. Pretty soon we'll get a uh, pop-up here that contains information about all of the things that are present inside of that box. So I've got a, a detector, uh, bridges, culverts, uh, a road crossing, and uh, clicking on any of these gives you additional information uh, about them sourced again from your geographic database or uh, table that you use depending on the source. Um, this again is updated in real time. As soon as your database is updated, you get the same thing uh, here in schematics, which is really helpful. Uh, you've also got some other options like highlight, for instance, will flash the feature in question, and we can even uh, recenter the map on this if we want. So, uh, another pretty common feature when people come to show off. Uh, track chart solutions is the ability to marry the schematic data with a geographic map. So in order to make some room here, I'm going to pull all these bands out. I'm going to move our plan band up to the top. I'll make a little bit more room down here at the bottom. And I'm going to come over and find my uh, map. So on the side over here, I'm going to load a geographic map of our enterprise data. Uh, you can actually turn off individual features within that map uh, and then go ahead and, and load it in. Here, let's make a little more room. There we go. And uh, as we zoom in, we've, we've gotten a little bit of skew, but uh, we've got some buttons for uh, making the map sync up with the features and vice versa. So uh, if we get within our area, we can hit the sync map and it will actually center our geographic view in the same kind of five mile space as we have up here in the schematic. And as we zoom in, we'll see we've got uh, all of the same same features loading in a geographic format down here. Uh, we also have the inverse up here in our navigation pane. Uh, if we wanted to force the schematic to move to wherever we were in the geographic view, uh, we've got a, a button for that there. So uh, here in the geographic view, we're at milepost 347. And uh, as we move north, we should start to see that, that river feature. Uh, and eventually we'll come to the bridge. So just to show you that they're kind of tied together here, we've, we've got our geographic representation of the river along the right of way. Uh, and then we've got the same thing uh, here as we approach in the schematic view. So that's really the uh, quick tour of our dynamic track charts solution. Uh, I hope this is useful. It's got you thinking about some ways that you can leverage uh, geographic information and location intelligence in your enterprise to help uh, make better decisions about how you're gonna operate and uh, solve the challenges that you have out there in the real world. Uh, again, my name's Tyler Remert. Uh, my address is here. If there's anything I can do to help, uh, please don't be shy and drop me a line. Thanks for joining us today. Mm -hmm.